and welcome to my channel. My name is Brienne Beebe and I've been blogging at Busy Miss Beebe for as long as I've been teaching, which is five years. My second year of teaching, I started using interactive notebooks and I will never look back. Interactive notebooks won't be for everybody and I'm not telling anyone that they need to do it, but I would like to share for those of you that are interested in using them or that do use them how I set mine up. Interactive notebooks have been a game changer in my classroom, specifically because of my content area. I teach not just math, but geometry. Geometry relies very heavily on diagrams. Having students draw these on their own can be extremely difficult and tedious, especially for students that struggle with drawing anyway. Having notes printed out for them where they have the diagram there and they can mark it up as they see fit is crucial. The majority of my notes personally are fill in just because that's how I think I am working to incorporate more foldables into my notes and to leave more space for students to take their own notes. The changes that I've personally seen since using interactive notebooks is that students know that they need to have these notes complete. So when they're absent, they are making sure that they get their notes added into their notebook. Prior to using interactive notebooks, I would hand students notes that they missed and a lot of times they would end up in the garbage. For my content area, it is very important that students have all of their notes or just something to go on just because there's so much content and it is so different from the other math courses that they have to take. My school does provide geometry textbooks, but what I found is that the rigor does not match common core standards and there are topics that are completely missing. And then there's extra topics that we don't even cover. So the textbooks don't really line up with our needs. So by creating interactive notebooks, my students are essentially creating their own textbook and it's theirs to keep and to use whenever they see fit. So today's video, you're going to see me walk you through how I set up my notebook for a new school year. This is my notebook from last year and it has gotten to be quite thick. So I'm starting out fresh with a new blank notebook and that's how skinny that this guy used to be. I'm going to do my label after I do the video because that was something I can just do quick. What I've done so far off camera was I put paper down on the inside cover. So I have paper here and then I have paper back here and then I added duct tape around the edges. So the duct tape that I used is the duckling of the duct tape brand and I just use whatever I have on hand and I like to line the edges just so that it stays sturdy. For my inside cover I have an interactive notebook version of my syllabus. So I have like all of my personal information covered but I have the course, my email address, my website, how to sign up for a mind, online textbook information, what to do when you're absent, requirements of the notebook, and then goals that my students have for their grades. And then on the inside, I just have everything else that my students need to know syllabus-wise. So this gets folded over, and then I'm going to glue it right on my inside cover. A big debate amongst interactive notebook users is what adhesive is best. A lot of teachers will say that they only use glue sticks and I can tell you that a glue stick after two to three months the glue completely dries up and the pages will start to fall out. A lot of teachers say that they will only ever use tape which is really expensive. I personally like to use liquid glue so the liquid glue is great if you have older students that can follow directions. So to glue a page down you only need four to five dots of glue. I like to do the four corners, one dot in the middle, and you want to make sure that they're in from the corners, not at the very edges, because you don't want the glue to seep out. Just turn this over, press down, and it's good. The next page that I have is my geometry symbols page. And so I have the symbol that they write in here, the name of the symbol. So there's the 10 major ones that will go over throughout the year that they put in their notes. And then I have the basic properties and postulates that students need to know for proofs. So this goes in the very first page. When I print pages out for my interactive notebook, I like to take a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, 
put it into landscape, and then I'll actually set up a table so that I can make sure that both sides are even. And I put it so that I have a dotted line going down the center, and then I'll put whatever I want on the pages. So this one, because it's just a single page, I've repeated it on both sides. And that makes it so that when I go to copy it, I only need to make half as many copies. I just cut down the center. And then I can glue it onto this page. Okay. And since this is the first page, I have to number it. So I put all my numbers in the upper right corner, and this is page one. My next page is going to be this survey that I give my students. It has 20 statements about growth mindset, especially related to math, for students to strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree with. And then when they flip it over to the back, they get a score for their responses. They get to total them up, and then over here, we'll tell them about their mindset score. So if they get a 45 to 60, they have a strong growth mindset. And then a zero to 20 indicates a strong fixed mindset. And then there's just some information for them about growth and fixed mindsets. So this will get folded over and it's going to be glued down to the second page. Okay, and since this is the second page in the upper left corner, I'm writing page two. Okay, so after these first two pages, we're going to start our first unit. So whenever I start a unit, I'll take a page, so I've turned it over, fold this down so that I get this diagonal crease right here, and then I'm going to add glue going down and then across in a thin line or maybe somewhat of a dotted line. And then I'll fold it, I'll turn the page, and then press down so that the glue adheres to the next page. This is page three. And this is what I refer to as a pocket page. Pocket pages are used to hold anything that students want, and they also serve as a dividing page for units. So this right here will be unit one. And my unit one is intro to geometry. So I like to put a little heading there. And then what I like to do is lift up my page and run my highlighter along the edge of it. And then what that will do is color the edge of the page, which you won't be able to see on camera, but it colors the edge of the page. It makes it easier to find the separation of units, just looking at the notebook from the top or the side. After my pocket page, I have a table of contents page. So this is what my table of contents page looks like. So in this circle, students put the unit number, we write out the title in here, and then as we're adding pages, we write in the date, the page title, and then the page numbers. And down here, we have an assessment tracker for students to keep track of their grades. So I print this two to a sheet, and I think I copy about 200 before the end of the school year. So I'm all set with these for the year. They've already been copied. And then what I will do differently here is because I'm going to write on it, I'm going to write on it before I glue it. Okay, so a tip is when you are gluing your pages in, for students that are taking notes on the pages, I always tell them to glue them at the end because once you glue your paper, it gets wet and trying to write on wet paper is not easy and oftentimes your paper will rip and your writing will be illegible. And this is page four. Okay, after the table of contents, I add in the unit self-assessment. So this gives students a chance to look over the objectives of the unit and then they rate themselves. So. They rate themselves on a one to four scale, one being I need to learn this, four being I could teach this. And there's two columns. So there's a pre-column before I teach the unit they go through, read everything over, and most likely they're gonna rate themselves a one or a two. 
And then for the post, they go and rate themselves after I've taught all the topics. Usually I'll have that as my do now right before we review for the test. They'll do their post assessment. So I'm gonna glue this down. There's nothing on here for me to write except for the heading on the page. This is page five, so I'm putting a five up in the corner. And this is my unit one self-assessment, so I'm gonna write that up above the paper that I glued in. So this would be the heading that's required of my students. My students often complain that it's overkill to have to write both the heading and the page on the table of contents, but I always tell them, if you're flipping through your notebook, you're gonna see the headings before you find the table of contents, most likely. After the self-assessment, we start getting into the notes. So on page six and seven, we'll have our first notes of the year. And the first thing that I'm doing with them is the triangle sum theorem and the exterior angle theorem. So these are the notes that would go on those pages. It's one full page, so each student will get one of these pages. They will have to cut down the dotted line and glue one half to each side. So I'll have the left side on this page and the right side on this page. I'm not doing that in this video just because I still have to go through and put down all the work, so I don't want to do that while it's in the notebook. It's easier to do it out of. So as I'm preparing my lessons, I'll have these prepared. I'll go through and do them and make sure that there's enough space for everything and that everything is correct. And once I do that, I will put it into the notebook. The last thing is going on the last page of the notebook. I grade my students and this is what the rubric looks like. So they get rated in three categories on a one to four scale, four being that everything's perfect, one being that a lot of work is needed, zero if something's completely missing. So the three things that they're graded on is that the table of contents is completely filled out, including the dates, all page numbers and headings are written, and then all pages have been added and are complete. So if they were to glue in a page but don't have notes filled in, they're not getting full credit there. So that would total up to 12 points. They'll get a grade out of 12 for unit one, a grade out of 12 for unit two, and then that's going to be our entire first quarter. So after the first quarter, they'll have a certain number out of 24, and then that percentage goes into their grade for the quarter as a quiz. So ideally, if they're keeping up with their notebook and doing everything correctly, they're going to have an extra 100 averaged into their grade, and my students usually appreciate that. So I have this broken down as best as I could figure that the units are going to fit into the marking periods. So I will definitely get through the first two units in the first quarter, and then I have units three through five in the second quarter, six through eight in the third quarter, and then units nine and 10 in the fourth quarter. Okay, so I cut these apart, and then the right side goes on the back cover. So I like to cover my back cover with paper first, and that just makes it easier for this to adhere. Oftentimes I will get out the tape for students because sometimes they have these notebooks with like plastic covers and those covers do need tape for this page. So that's fine and I'll get tape for them. But when you glue to paper, the paper is nice and porous so the glue adheres perfectly. And then the first page goes on the left side. That one drop of glue went a little close to the edge. But I'll just leave this page open so it dries. There you have it. That is my 2017-2018 interactive notebook setup. Okay, that concludes my interactive notebook setup. I hope you enjoyed watching and that this was helpful to you in some way. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment below. And as always, thank you for watching.